Well, I'm, I work for a company called Red. Uh, my name is Ted. I'm the first employee of Red. So uh, I've been here since the very beginning um, when that camera that you're shooting with was just an idea, just a dream. Uh, and there were just a couple of us on the team. And uh, within a fairly short order, we actually built up an engineering team and started to work on what would become the next generation digital cinema camera, digital movie camera. So um, let, me, let me take you back to the beginning and then I'll kind of expand on, on why we designed this camera this way and what was important to us. So um, as we're seeing film and uh, the usage of film starting to become less relevant, less needed as the only way to shoot for a big screen motion picture or create that filmic look, there was a, a sort of an alarming trend that we were seeing where electronic camera captures were just becoming advanced video cameras. Um, whereas on the still side, there was a really nice transition and a really well understood and, and thought out logic that still cameras moved from where predominantly people were shooting on 35 millimeter film to a digital world which was eventually replaced by raw capture by using the same lenses, the same methodology, the cameras feel and hold and work essentially the same as their analog brethren from the years past, but they do it in a digital world. But they're still shooting these super high resolution progressive raw frames that are very similar to a latent image on a film frame, except you don't have to use all the chemicals to process them. You use computers and technology to, to move that through. So we felt that was the right way to do things. We felt that transition was handled with care and with the proper respect and logic that it should have been. On the motion picture side, the trend was to try and advance video capture, which is um, images that are uh, sort of created inside the camera, that actually you color them as you shoot them, and it's a video stream. Um, and they can do an adequate job, but they really don't replace cinema. So what we did is we looked at the transition on the still side, on the digital still camera side, and we took a lot of that logic because we really appreciated that. And we moved away from the logic of the video camera side. And what we did is we built a super high resolution progressive frame making device that doesn't shoot video, that shoots these super high res. Uh, in, in this camera, the Red One, they're 4K at their, at their maximum size. So they're a little over four times the size of an HD frame um, as a progressive raw image that can then be taken through a processing step just like you would with film except you don't have the expense of the film itself of the chemicals that you use uh, to, to process that film it's all replaced by computer technology by computing systems that are very low cost relatively low cost um, easily accessible to all parts of the industry whether you're just a garage operation just starting out in your basement or your house or all the way up to the biggest filmmakers of the world the most um, sort of important uh, voices in the industry like uh, Steven Soderbergh and Peter Jackson and David Fincher uh, those type of people are also now uh, using RED and have embraced this technology more, any, more than anything else because it's not video because they're shooting a replacement for film Before RED came on the scene, um, top-end cinema cameras were really uh, what we call exclusionary products, meaning if you didn't have a big budget, if you weren't of the upper echelon uh, cinematographers going into a big uh, environment, you had real difficulty uh, accessing these tools. And if you did, you were dedicating a huge portion of your budget that wasn't something that you could put up on the screen. You were tying that to the analog technology of the past. And you were committing a lot of money and, and time to that. Um, when RED came along, we sort of turned that on its head. Because previous to RED, if you were not going to use film, you were making an image compromise. You weren't shooting real cinema style. Um, you were doing something less. Now, when RED came along, we were showing people very early on, and of course it's evolved quite nicely, um, that you didn't have to make those compromises anymore. That you could put more money up on the screen because you didn't have to tie so much money up in your film stock and your processing and those, and those cameras. Regardless of the budget of the movie that you might be shooting, if you have a small budget movie that say has a $50,000 budget, or you have a huge budget movie that say has a $15 million budget, 
you're not making any compromise in image quality if you're using, if you're on that smaller part of the scale. You're using the same exact camera, the same exact image quality. Um, and that's really key. That was very important to us. It means a lot more movies that may have not had a chance to be made will be made, which means that you're going to have a lot more options for cinema. You're going to have a lot more creativity rising to the top. You know, the provability is that big budget movies aren't necessarily the most important movies that are made in cinema. Um, it's the independent voice. It's the the, the outside of the norm, outside of the big Hollywood budget blockbuster that are really the important voices. So, so the film industry in general um, is evolving probably quicker now in the last few years than any time in its history. Um, with the advent of all these digital post-production tools coming uh, down in price, the desktop software on the Mac or the PC, um, being able to work with red material natively and open it up very easily and uh, manipulate these files very easily. Um, the studios uh, at every part of the industry worldwide are paying very close attention to this, this rebellion, to this revolution. Some are not the quickest on the uptake. It typically are the independent guys uh, that are the first to embrace new technology. But the, the big players are paying close attention and they don't want to be left too far behind. So they're watching and they're learning and now they've gone from full-on um, concern to full-on embrace.